Good afternoon everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Working Together to Prevent Exposure to Asbestos Fibres in Order to Eliminate Asbestos Related Disease in Australia. I'm Stephanie Murawski from WorkSafe Tasmania and I will be your moderator today. Before we start, I ask that you take a few moments to read the following slide about information received today. I will now go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's webinar. We have taken a screenshot of an example of the attendee interface. You should see something that looks like this on your computer in the upper right corner. You're listening in using your computer's speaker system by default. If you would prefer to join over the phone, just select telephone in the audio pane and the dial-in information will be displayed. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presentation by typing your questions into the questions pane of the control panel. You may send your questions in at any time during the webinar. Questions will be addressed at the end of today's presentation. We are also recording today's webinar. Recordings will be available at the end of WorkSafe Month, which concludes today. And also at the close of today's webinar, you will receive a short survey on the presentation and we appreciate you providing us with your feedback. I would now like to introduce today's presenter, Justine Ross, Chief Executive Officer at Asbestos Safety and, Erad and Eradication Agency to present today's webinar, working together to prevent exposure to asbestos fibres in order to eliminate asbestos related disease in Australia. Justine was appointed Chief Executive Officer of the agency in August 2018 for a period of five years. Prior to this, she was Acting Group Manager of the Work Health and Safety Policy Group in the Department of Jobs and Small Business, responsible for policy development and advice on Commonwealth worker, work health and safety and workers' compensation, maritime workers' compensation and work health and safety matters, asbestos matters, and workplace relations issues concerning the building industry. Justine has a Bachelor of Laws and a Bachelor of Arts from Macquarie University and has completed a Master of OHS at the International Training Centre of the International Labour Organisation at Turin University. Justine is admitted to practice as a barrister and solicitor in the ACT. Welcome, Just Justine. Thank you. Okay, well, we'll just, just get st started. Um, I want just to st just start with providing uh, the context for the work of the Asbestos Safety and Eradication Agency. So you will see the, the first slide says that um, there's 4,000 deaths each year from asbestos related diseases in Australia. Um, this is an estimated number of deaths and it's sourced from um, work by Professor um, Tim Driscoll of um, University of Sydney and it's based on the World Health Organisation Global Burden of Disease study. He's in fact um, more than double the number of annual Australian road deaths. Um, the second slide is about the third wave. So the third wave refers to those that have been um, exposed to asbestos fibres in the non-workplace setting, like your do-it-yourself home renovators. Um, between 1982 and 2017, the number of cases of mesothelioma has steadily increased over that period from 135 um, for males to 22 for females in 1982 to 631 for males and 158 for females in 2017. Uh, a number of years ago it was estimated that the, 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 third, the third wave would peak by around, by around this time, by around 20, 2019, 2020, um, but unfortunately that, that, still, that still hasn't occurred. Um, the next slide is showing that there, there is no evidence that a safe threshold exists or a minimum exposure level to prevent the adverse health effects of the use of asbestos. Um, this is what the World Health, health Organisation has, has determined to be the case. 
And as there is no known level of exposure that would prevent the likelihood of an asbestos-related disease occurring, um, the risks to human health now and into the future um, when asbestos is disturbed, disturbed or deteriorates is, is still unacceptable. And with that, um, no safe um, level of exposure. We know that we know that use in controlled environments is is not feasible because the risk of exposure is cannot be eliminated, and which is why we have a work a workplace ban of all uses of asbestos um, in Australia. Um, so just going a bit back in time um, before the ban was imposed more than 3,000 products containing asbestos were used in Australia, um, was widely used. So in products like fly, fire blankets and curtains, um, insulation in heaters and stoves, um, tiles um, for roofing, corrugated asbestos cement roofing sheets, um, ceiling insulation products. Um, it was used around um, for, as lagging around pipes, there's, there was asbestos rope, asbestos electrical cloth, um, paints as well, textured paints and coatings. Uh, I think everybody's well aware of brake pads, it was using brake pads and, and, and clutch facings, electrical switchboards and, and the, list, the list there just goes on. Um, one of the big concerns in Australia is is the 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 num the, the amount of illegally um, dumped asbestos per year. So in in 2016, um, the agency commissioned research in an attempt to estimate the amount of illegally dumped waste containing asbestos, um, and on the initiatives that were being implemented by state, territory, and local governments to address the dumping. So our research estimated that 6,300 tonnes of ACMs is illegally dumped in Australia each year and that the cost of cleanup is estimated to be around $11.2 million per year. And it also found that it was the local councils and private landowners who bear the cost of cleaning up. Now it found that illegal dumping is largely occurred due to the high cost associated with legal removal and disposal, uh, limited access as well to asbestos waste facilities, um, the avoidance of paying levies at those facilities and the opportunity for commercial operators to make um, a higher profit um, if the client wasn't charged the full cost of disposal. And there was also just a general, it also found there was a general lack of awareness um, of, of the risk, particularly amongst the do-it-yourself home renovators and tradespersons of, to the general public of illegal disposal. And of course, we have naturally occurring asbestos here in Australia. So, um, just wanted to, I guess, make it clear what the agency's aim um, is and why it was has was established. So, ASEA was established in 2013, and it was established to administer the National Strategic Plan for Asbestos Management and Awareness. ASEA is is not a regulator. Um, our key functions are to um, encourage, coordinate and monitor the implementation of the plan, as well as re reviewing it um, as appropriate. Also, our, one of our key functions is to liaise with other Commonwealth, state and territory and local and other government bodies and agencies, and to commission and monitor and promote research about as asbestos safety. So, I've also put up some, um, well, in this presentation, some, some notable dates in managing asbestos in Australia. Um, in 1999, the National Industrial Chemicals Notification and Assessment Scheme, so as known commonly as NICNAS, completed their assessment of chrysotile asbestos, and in that assessment recommended that a national ban be put in place. 
So in 2000 and 2003, so that was on the 31st of December 2003, a national band was put in place um, a, around the country. Shortly after um, what was then the National Occupational Health and Safety Commission, which is now Safe Work Australia, they revised their codes of practice uh, on the um, management and control of um, asbestos and the safe removal of asbestos. And um, another date in there is 2011. There is in fact a parliament, a federal parliamentary working group on asbestos related diseases, which is we call PGARD. Um, that was established in 2011. Also in 2011, Safe Work Australia developed model work health and safety regulations and, and codes of practice on asbestos. And just flicking over, um, in 2012, the asbestos management review was completed and that review recommended the establishment um, of a national agency, which the C was established in 2013. And then in 2015, all state and territory governments um, approved the first national strategic plan for management and awareness, which went from 2014 to 2018. Um, and then just skipping to 2018, we developed the, the, the second, second national strategic plan, um, which is the one that I'm going to provide you with details of today. So what is the national strategic plan? So the national strategic plan is there to ensure that there is a nationally consistent and coordinated approach to asbestos awareness management and removal throughout the country. And it outlines that there is a phased approach to eliminating asbestos related diseases in Australia by preventing exposure to asbestos fibres. It was, as I said before, it was the Asbestos Management Review in 2012, which recommended that there, there should be a national plan to better drive, focus and coordinate efforts to address asbestos related issues across Australia. So like the first plan that was put into place, um, the 2019 to 2023 plan, it's really, it's, it's still based back in the recommendations of the National, the, the asbestos, sorry, the Asbestos Management Review re Report. And the, um, there was a range of recommendations in there regarding how um, asbestos should be managed in situ and that there should also be a prioritised approach to its removal. Um, and that's just a few things. I've just popped up a slide just um, outlining a few other sources that um, informed the development of the 2019-2023 plan. Um, which included the National Asbestos Profile, which the agency completed in 2017. A number um, of workshops that we held, including a summit that we held in Canberra in 2017. Um, the research reports that over the first phase of the plan that we commissioned, and, and there's over 50, 50 research reports that we commissioned over that time, and just and targeted stakeholder consultations particularly with state and territory representatives from a range of agencies, um, but also unions and, and employer representatives. So um, the current status of the plan is, uh, you'll see up on the screen there, it says it's currently with state and territory work health and safety ministers for, for approval. Um, but um, I had to submit my slides a, a few weeks ago for this presentation. Um, but um, only in the last few weeks have, have we received that it's, it's been approved by um, the Victorian government. So now we, we have the plan um, approved by all state and territory governments. We've, with Western Australia um, agreeing to its, its um, priority areas in principle, follow, and, and they're just conducting further um, consultation with, within the jurisdiction. So the plan contains four national priorities. And the first pro national priority is to improve asbestos awareness in order to influence behavioural change. And strategic actions under this priority will include producing targeted, comprehensive 
and nationally consistent asbestos awareness advice and information campaigns, um, both for the community and, and for workers. Um, we have done that, um, we we're doing this um, currently in terms of um, preparing materials for Asbestos Awareness Week, um, which we will be circulating uh, or have already circulated to, to, a lot of our, to a lot of our stakeholders. We will also be um, producing additional practical information on asbestos safety and it, both within, within the home, in the workplace and, and also in the environment. Um, and we're expanding and, um, our research and, and sharing information on asbestos related diseases um, in order to improve policy and, and practice in the area. The second priority um, is identification and effective legacy management. And what the strategic actions will be under this priority will be is identifying and promoting robust models for, um, for identifying and grading asbestos containing materials, collaborating to develop a natural a national picture, sorry, a national picture of where asbestos containing materials are located in homes in, and in commercial and public buildings and um, in the infrastructure as well and, and in the land, in, in, for example, contaminated land. Um, we will also be working on um, the development of um, emergency and, and natural disaster planning regarding asbestos. The third priority is um, safe prioritised removal and effective waste management. Um, and some of the strategic actions under this priority are improving the, the quality of asbestos related training and ensuring effective oversight of the licensing regime. Developing incentives to encourage the safe removal and disposal of asbestos containing materials um, from homes and improving the accessibility and availability of waste disposal facilities uh, for, for ACMs. And finally, the fourth national priority is international collaboration and, and leadership. Now this this is a priority that's that's largely led um, by by ASEA um, and and working with other federal government agencies such as the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade and the Department um, of the Environment. So um, under this priority, we will be continuing to present the Australian government's position on banning asbestos mining, manufacture and use at um, relevant international conventions. Um, we are encouraging um, our, our neighbours, our close neighbours in, in Southeast Asia and in, in the Pacific um, to in fact put in place bans um, like, Australia, like Australia has. We, we try to present the framework that we have here, um, particularly in the workplace um, as as best as best practice um, to the to the rest of the world, so so we share best practice approaches to asbestos awareness management and eradication at, at international international events, and one of the things we we do as well is that we we educate the the import supply chain to prevent um, illegal ACMs asbestos containing materials entering entering into Australia because the big risk to, to Australia through the continued trade of and use of asbestos containing materials, particularly in, in, South, in Southeast Asia, is, is that we have incidents of um, them in, ending up, ending up in, in, in Australia, being important, imported into Australia illegally and, and adding to, to the, the legacy that, that we have. Uh, there's, new to, to this phase of the National Strategic Plans is uh, our targets. Um, the first phase of the, of the plan um, did, not, did not have any targets and it, it sort of meant 
for us it meant that measuring performance and, and progress was, was quite difficult. Um, it had, the first phase plan had six strategies, six goals, 20 deliverables and 22 outcomes. And, and trying to, to measure um, whether, whether those, um, the activity in all those areas was uh, across the country was extremely um, challenging. So we will be using the, the targets as, as a way of measuring progress towards the aim of this plan. Uh, and I'll just go um, go through the through some of the targets and and point out how we are proposing to to actually um, measure progress. So the first target is increasing awareness of the health risks of ACM and where to source information. So from um, previous research that we have done, and in particular uh, um, a, an awareness survey that we have con conducted um, a few times now, um, we have got insight into that there may be some awareness that um, particularly um, workers and um, in, in the trades, that there's, there's awareness of the health risks of ACM, um, but there's not always, um, that doesn't always translate into appropriate action, into, into then safe work, I guess. Same, same with homeowners is that they, they um, certainly know of asbestos, know of the health risks involved, but may not that, again, that may not translate in them to, into uh, protecting themselves, um, you know, when it comes to home, home renovations. So target, target one will um, measure the level of awareness and knowledge of the likelihood of exposure to asbestos fibres, the, the health risks associated with asbestos fibres, um, where to go and source um, information and, and that the behaviours um, that influence information seeking as well. And we will also try, as, as part of this as well, asbestos, we'll also try to pick up on attitudes and behaviours towards asbestos. And we would do this by continuing to conduct an awareness, awareness surveys um, amongst the cohorts. Um, target two will measure the extent to which governments have a systematic approach to effectively identifying and assessing asbestos risks across government, um, which enables them to better understand the nature of their asbestos legacy. So there will be two key me mechanisms by which we will measure this target. And one of them will be the format of asbestos registers. And so this will be whether sort of registers are a, a sort of a static paper-based documents or, or whether they are sort of more sophisticated database systems. We will also be looking at the, the degree of consolidation or coordination of information, which then can be used to identify key areas of potential exposure risk. So, for example, we'll be looking at whether there's consolidated um, registers across public schools, across hospitals, ac across prisons and contaminated lands and the like. Um, and we will, the, the measurement um, will use the, the current system as, as a benchmark and it will track any then changes in the system over the course of the, the, the five years of the National Strategic Plan. So following on from target two, target three will be measuring the progress that's being made by jurisdictions to develop uh, schedules and processes for the remediation of legacy asbestos from publicly owned properties and infrastructure and the safe disposal of that material. So this is with the aim of recording um, systems towards a planned, systematic and staged approach to removal, which is sort of consistent with work health and safety duties, um, because what we're trying to, uh, we're trying to sort of encourage here is, is a proactive approach to, to managing the legacy, as opposed to an ad hoc approach, 
where removal may take place in emergency situations and where ACMs have already been damaged and disturbed. And the reason for this is because we do know that the removal, the planned removal of asbestos containing materials is far safer and more cost effective than in that unplanned or that emergency removal situation. And, you know, for example, as a result of, of a, natural disaster, a natural disaster. Uh, so, so in a, a flyer, fire or flood type situation. Um, target four um, will measure the extent to which asbestos compliance programs that the regulators have planned or, or un undertaken, um, what do they have in place. And for the purpose of this target, um, we consider compliance programs to be activities that are um, designed to help duty holders understand their obligations under the law and encourage them to voluntarily comply with the law. So these are activities in terms of the in enforcement pyramid. These, these are, are the activities that, that sit down sit at the bottom of, of that pyramid. Um, target five is, is about the commercial sector. And that it's about um, the extent to which the commercial sector has up-to-date registers and, and management plans which are actively being implemented. Um, we acknowledge that measuring this target is going to um, require the, the, the development of, uh, I guess, novel mechanisms because currently, um, apart from work health and safety um, regulatory compliance activity, there's really no other means of assessing if commercial buildings do in fact have up-to-date asbestos registers and if they have management plans in place and if they are being implemented. In terms of being implemented, we, we mean by that that they're, they're being used to be able to make an, a, an assessment uh, um, or, or manage, manage their risks. Um, one of the common um, complaints that, that we hear here is, is that um, asbestos registers um, in commercial buildings um, are of poor quality, there's lots of inconsistency and, and then they're not always serving the, the, the purpose um, that, that um, they've been put in the, the law to achieve, um, which is to make people aware of, of the risks involved if, with the um, ACMs within that building. So target six is that all regulators are investigating, prosecuting and penalising serious known breaches of asbestos related laws, including of illegal waste disposal and and importation. And so this target is uh, going back to the to the enforcement pyramid, which I'm sure you're familiar with. This one, this target is concerned with tier one and two activities um, in that pyramid. So the um, investigating, prosecuting, penalising, by that we mean issuing notice, so prohibition notices, infringement notices, um, th those types of things, improvement notices. Uh, target, target seven is will measure whether asbestos waste is easy and cheap to dispose of. Um, given that, that we know that the key drivers of unlawful disposal is both convenience and cost. So for this purpose of this target, um, easier by that we mean there's a facility that is located within a reasonable driving distance to the removal activity and one that is open reasonably often. And that's come from the research that I mentioned um, earlier that we commissioned on um, illegal disposal of asbestos waste um, and that found that um, if you have to drive if you have to drive too far um, to to dispose of the waste um, there's more of the likelihood that it will just be dumped um, and by cheaper we mean that charges and levies are set at 
a price that incentivises approved or disposal and discourages illegal disposal, but doesn't incentivise homeowners um, to um, do it the, do it themselves removal. Um, so it's this is sort of really tricky in in that, and I know that in some jurisdictions um, they have re removed um, the disposal fee altogether for for homeowners, so they can just dispose of free of charge. Um, but the, the, you know, the flip side of that, I guess, is you don't want to in, encourage homeowners um, to be removing um, themselves. Um, the position that we take here at the agency is is that it's best asbestos is always best removed by by a professional, someone who knows what they're doing, and for a homeowner to to protect themselves adequately, um, the equipment that they would need to purchase, they need to take into account all the factors, the equipment they would need to purchase to be, to be in order to um, undertake the job safely um, and then dispose of the asbestos safely, you know, it, it may end up at the end of the day, the cost may end up to be the, to be the same. So finally, um, target target eight um, is, um, as mentioned earlier, about that the, the work that the agency that the agency actually does in in Southeast Asia and the in the Pacific, um, encouraging um, countries in in those regions to to put bans in, in in place. Some of them have bans already, of course, in relation to to some types of asbestos, but here we're we're particularly getting at the use of the use of chrysotile asbestos. Now, since um, again, since these these slides were, were put together, um, we have added an additional target, um, which is target nine. And target nine is the one that is aimed at getting the nat the national picture of the extent of asbestos uh, in the in the residential sector. So. Um, this will, you know, enable us. We we think by um, getting this a, a better sense of of how much is is still within within our homes. Um, in, in in New South Wales, um, there was a figure that was used at one stage of that that every two out of three homes contains asbestos somewhere. Um, in in the ACT, they they determined a, a few years ago that it could be greater than that. It could be four out of out of five. Um, so so we are looking at that to see whether those those figures are, are still valid, um, where there may be hotspot areas, um, and and this is um, I guess with the objective that we can sort of better target target our awareness information, and also it tying back to, to target seven, um, where you need to have disposal facilities located. Um, the, the new plan also um, contains um, five principles um, that will guide um, the planning and implementation of all the strategic actions. And um, I, I think they're, they're, they're sort of very, it's quite common um, Principles that you you see in these types of these types of national strategies or corporate strategies, and and that is that yes, everything that we do is is evidence based on um, decision making. Um, that we are very strong about um, consultation, collaboration, and cooperation. Um, that we want particularly the work of the agency to the, to be there that transparency um, that. We always have to keep in mind when you're dealing with asbestos the um, precautionary approach. Um, so, and which sometimes means you know it's always best to to um, to you need to presume first that that um, something contains asbestos if you don't know. Presume that it doesn't contain asbestos um, un until you find out for sure that um, that it doesn't. And one of the things that we're very keen on is is sharing best practice. Um, another thing that uh, I guess wasn't sort of set out clearly um, in the in the last plan, but we wanted to capture in 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 this phase of the plan, is is the all of the players in what we are calling the asbestos management system, and um, we think you know everybody 
has um, a, a role to play um, and it's in, it's really important we wanted to convey that there that it's sort of a shared responsibility and the importance of each player playing uh, their role. So um, we have mapped in a sense all the government agencies um, that we think are involved and you know that's that's across the Commonwealth and, and state and territory governments. Um, all the regulators that we think uh, are involved in, in, in the system or, or, or with this issue or their work may, may touch on, on, this, on this issue in some way. Um, the range of, of non-government groups uh, as, as well um, and, and acknowledge that the work that, that they do go toward, goes towards implementing, in, implementing the plan. Um, and importantly, we wanted to sort of highlight um, local government and you know the the important role um, that they play um, as as well and uh, in and the responsibility that they have. And in mapping this, it's sort of I guess it's important as to remember that you know it's the Commonwealth, state, and territory governments that have signed up to the plan that we see them as the primary implementers. A CEA is responsible for coordinating that implement that implementation, but it's the actions of um, others in um, local government and in, in the non-government sector um, that go towards um, helping us uh, implement and, and achieve the, the aim of the plan, which is to prevent exposure to asbestos fibres in, in order to eliminate asbestos-related diseases in, in Australia. Uh, and I'm just showing you our contact details um, and um, feel, please feel free to, to contact us. And um, that's it. So I hand back to you, Stephanie. Thank you, Justine. So we will now answer any questions that uh, attendees have. So if you do have any questions, please submit your questions to the questions pane in your attendee control panel. So first question, quest, sorry, first question, Justine. Are there easy to follow resources we can provide to all on-site workers from stage one apprentices and labourers to highly experienced site foremen about how to identify all types of asbestos? We have done, so um, the agency has produced some some resources, and you will find them on our, on our website. Um, but how we've produced them, particularly for trades, is is that we've broken them up into the trades. So um, there are some um, pamphlets on our website. So for electricians, um, it's it's a quite an easy um, pamphlet to un to understand. It has some pictures in it. You know where you may commonly find, particularly in the residential sector, where you may come commonly come across asbestos. So we have that type of information. Um, when it comes to, it's always important to keep in mind, when it comes to the actual identification, you may know where to look and you may get there and you may think, oh, I suspect that is asbestos. But as I said earlier, it's really not until you get it tested that you're going to know whether it's asbestos or not. So you should, if you suspect it is, uh, you should always conduct your work um, with those precautions that it is does contain asbestos, um, and all the alternative is, of course, to go off and get it tested and and to get that determination of whether it is or not. But there those there are those resources out there. There's those ones on our website, and 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 we do it by 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 you know showing the range of pictures of 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 products or of building materials. Thank you, Justine. Um, so someone has just mentioned that uh, they missed the start of the webinar and have asked for the link. Um, so we will send that to attendees uh, following today's webinar. So there is still time to send uh, through any other questions that you may have for, for Justine. So I'll start to wrap up. So 
Thank you, Justine, for today's webinar presentation, working together to prevent exposure to asbestos fibres in order to eliminate asbestos-related disease in Australia. And before I keep going, there is another question that has come through. Will the, will the stone masonry industry be policed the same, the same especially with silicosis issues arising? Um, I guess the with the silicosis issue and the I mean the the stone bench top issue, of course, work work health and safety laws, um, or I mean they they do contain the controls um, already. I know that Safe Work Australia um, has re released a review of the the exposure standard, but um, I guess you're sort of dealing with a with a different hazard um, in terms of um, uh, when it comes to asbestos. So, of course, asbestos has been, you know, totally banned. You cannot use it. You cannot use it at all, apart from under certain circumstances. With the with the silica issue and the stone bench top issue, it's a, it's a little bit different. The product, the product is 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 not banned as as such, uh, but it's about getting you you know your exposure to the dust down. To, to the level of the of the exposure standard and, and making sure you put the, all those appropriate controls in place. So, um, so when in it, look, I, in a sense, um, there are, there are proposals in the same type of way. To um, we have a exposure register. Um, I know there's a proposal, and I think Queensland already has in place um, a register where someone who's being diagnosed with silicosis. Um, can in fact you know record their record their details so sort of some similar sort of mechanisms are, are are being are being put in place but they are um, quite different hazards um, we, we consider them to be sort of different hazards requiring requiring different different controls and and I guess different different mechanisms thank you Justine at the close of today's webinar, attendees will receive a survey on the presentation and we do appreciate your feedback. So on behalf of WorkSafe Tasmania and our presenter today, Justine Ross from the Asbestos Safety and Eradication Agency, we thank everyone for joining us for today's webinar. Thank you, Justine. Thank you.